I got my buddy Rob with me today, and yes, we are gonna learn something new like always when we learn and talk with Rob. Rob is an amazing person. We're gonna talk Tool Connect today. Back in my day, we used to have a tool presetter like this Omega right here. We put the tool holder into the presetter. We take a measurement, write it down on a piece of paper, walk over to the machine, put that red number into the machine itself, into the offsets. Sometimes we were wrong, which made a big problem, but most of the time we were right. However, these days, there's a much more modern way to do this. That's what Tool Connect is about. That's what Rob's here to teach us about. We're gonna learn a little bit more. Rob, thank you so much for being a part of MTD again, my friend. Thank you, Tony, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to show and demonstrate this product today. Um, so what we're gonna basically look at first of all here is um, kind of you know the, the initial part in a tool crib where tools are preset. The Tool Connect product is really designed for the machine side. So once the data is written into the RFID tags, now Tool Connect handles transferring it properly into the machine control. But it all has to start out with properly measuring tools in a tool presetter. So here we have an Omega tool presetter. This one's a CNC presetter, meaning it can do everything all by itself uh, automatically. So I'll initiate a uh, tool read and what will happen is it's the system will automatically pull the tool out of the library that it has in its database, and it's reading the information of how this tool should be set up, and it's asking me to clean the tool, so it's wanting to get all the dust off it. The tool is being optically measured by a camera. The system will automatically rotate the tool around, find the high spot, and now it's measuring both the length and the diameter of this tool. Once it's done that and it's completed, it will then move away and actually bring the RFID head out automatically and write all the information of the tool. It could be things as simple as length and diameter, but it could be what's the taper of the tool, uh, what's the weight of the tool. Some tool changers need to slow down when a tool is heavier than a certain amount. It could be RPM, what's the fastest this tool should run at, uh, what pocket should this tool go in in the machine. So there's a lot of information that can be written on this tool, and it's all handled at the presetter side. So the tool now, after that operation is complete, all that data is written into the RFID tag inside the tool holder, and it's there forever, theoretically, because it's non-volatile memory and it just stays in that tool until somebody actually puts it in a machine or brings it back to the tool presetter. Well, Rob, you answered pretty much every question I wanted to ask you, which <laughs> is amazing because the RFID chip itself I was going to ask, well, what kind of information is it only just length and height? But you mentioned it's going to be weight. It's going to be so much more to it, which is always going to be there right. to allow us to, again, as we always do with Karen Engineering, remove that operator error. How many times do we make the mistake or we pop something in that's too large for a holder or needs to spin faster or whatever it might be, right? It's not just length and diameter like it used to be when I manually plugged it in. This is a database of information, a chip of information that keeps a solid account of what's going on with that specific tool that then we load into the machine, right? Exactly. And the sort of the beauty of this is as the skill laborer that is actually operating machines um, degrades, the prevention of tools going in the wrong machine is, is automatically integrated into this system. So you can even write which machine this tool belongs in on the tag. So you can really foolproof a lot of that. But the beauty is that once it's there, it's ready to go whenever it needs to go into a machine tool. Um, so once the tool goes into the machine, and we'll show that as a demonstration, it can also write pertinent information when the tool leaves the machine. Not every tool that's removed from a machine um, is, is expired. It could be used again. So we can talk about that when we see how the tool is actually loaded at the machine side. Well, Rob, let me ask you one quick question because this is reverse engineering curiosity at this point. Let's say that I'm not paying attention when I go into work. It's a Monday or a Friday, right? And I'm walking around with my tool and I'm not paying attention. I smack it against something. This whole thing snaps off and I don't actually remember what tool I had in my tool holder. Can I actually reverse engineer, go into that RFID chip and then look what tool is supposed to be in there, pull it out of my tool crab and put it into the holder? Yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, RFID tag can be read at a presetter station, at other stations, and all the information that was on that tool when it was measured is still available next week, next month, next year. So should we take a look, a walk over to the machine and see what it looks like getting popped in? I think we should. Well, Rob, now we're in front of the machine to put into practice what we were just talking about, right? Yes, so absolutely. show me what we're doing now. Okay. So 
the operator now is ready to put the tool into the machine. The tool has all the information written on the RFID tag, and so it's a very simplistic operation. They put the tool into the tool holder and basically tell the system they're going to load the tool. The, t the uh, system then goes out and reads all the information on the tool. In this case, there's a picture associated with it, so they can kind of look quickly and say, you know, yes, that picture looks like that tool, so I'm pretty confident everything's okay. Now, it's already doing the checks and balances in the background to make sure this tool actually belongs on this machine, but all the pertinent information about this tool is on the chip. It's now in the system and is ready to be installed in the machine. They simply say continue. They can, in this particular case, they're going to type in a tool pot that they want to load it into. If the presetter knows ahead of time what that tool pot is, it can be written in here and eliminate even that step. So all that typing can be eliminated. Not every machine and shop knows at the presetter where the tool is going to go in the machine. They typically know which machine it belongs in, uh, but not necessarily exactly what location because sometimes it's random. The nice thing about this system is it's completely flexible. We can modify and reprogram it at any point in time for any of those operations based on the customer specification. So now the tool is uh, basically, it's all set, everything's ready to go, the information's there. The operator removes the tool to put it in the magazine and the data was automatically written to the uh, tool offset page, all done and basically no, nobody had to type anything in there other than in this case the tool pot. The other kind of really meaningful piece of information here is that in the background Tool Connect is, is creating an audit log of everything that I just did. So all the transactions, date and time, what information was exchanged back and forth uh, from the uh, RFID tag to the machine control. So if you ever have a problem in production you can go back last month and say what was the offset length when that tool went into the machine? Could we be, maybe we're not controlling it well enough in our process. So there's a lot of data available. Um, you can even incorporate which operator did the process of loading the tool. Um, the second thing that's possible with the system is the ability to unload the tool, remove the tool from the machine. It can be put back into the pot and any data that you would want to track, such as the wear offsets, tool life, or other pertinent information that needs to stay with the tool because you may want to use this tool in another machine. That's all possible as well. And again, it's completely eliminating the operator error of entering information. You know, Rob, I'm listening to you talk about this and it, it really feels like to me, and I know we've said this before, that removing the operator error is really the focus. Being all inclusive on the information of the RFID. But the question I have is, if I really, really wanted to make a mistake, is it even still possible, or have you just removed <laughs> all of those, those possibilities with this setup? Well, it depends really on the system. The system can be created sophisticated enough, and I, I would say that it's impossible to ever make it 100% mistake-proof. 99.9 .9 maybe, um, but it really depends on the integration, the control capabilities, and some of the other things as to how foolproof we can make it. We do add things in like making sure we saw the door open and close. If there's a proximity switch where the tool pot is, we can make sure a tool was put in and removed. So we put in every possible check and balance depending on the machine configuration that's available to us. That's a great answer because you're right. There is going to be someone out there that's going to go, yeah, yeah. hold my beer, right, yeah. and see what they we can could, do. They could smash the door and just pull tools out and there's nothing no indication of that from our standpoint. So. But directly related to the Tool Connect of Karen Engineering, it's almost, and as you say, 99.9, .9, a foolproof system yeah. that's all inclusive of the information as deep as someone wants to dive into it and implement right. into the card itself, sure. as far as they want to go on every aspect of what is embodied in this tool, right? That's right. And, you know, um, the other, the historical portion should never be overlooked because uh, the information that's available, you know, so we've talked in the past about the fact that, you know, everybody sets the tools to a certain length within a tolerance. Maybe it's plus or minus a hundred thousandths, um, but is that truly a, a tight enough tolerance for what you're trying to cut with the job? Well, by looking at the data of what the tool was set to over two months, three months, you've now got a lot more information about how the length, minor length changes of the tool might affect the cutting process especially when you incorporate our other products like TMAC, 
who can time align the data with the tool that went in the machine? Well, Rob, by understanding our history, by understanding our past, we can create a better future, and absolutely. that should not be overlooked. You are absolutely correct. Yep. Guys, gals, this is Tool Connect. This is Karen Engineering, implemented with so many other incredible products that allow us to be more productive, make less mistakes, and really remove that user operator error, which if you had me in your shop, you'd buy all of this yesterday. <laughs> so with that being said, Rob, you are amazing. Thank Thanks, you Tony. so much for Appreciate sharing these details much. with us and with the global audience at MTD. Thank you, everybody.